what it do, Jive Turkeys. This is Ian Elliott Carter of the Controversy. Along with me is my beautiful girlfriend, Tatiana. Hey. hey. So I want to do, a, do something a little different. I've always wanted to do a walk and talk where I'm just chatting and uh, getting exercise at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone. It's a very sensitive topic I wanted to talk about. And uh, this is like a, more of a vlog than I've ever done. I'm usually doing entertainment news and and uh, talking and giving commentary, I guess, to other things. But this is something in my personal life I wanted to share. Um, so this story starts back for me being a child. It goes back a little bit further, but I'm gonna just start from myself being a child. Uh, my father died in 1997, the end of the 97, almost 98, and he died of suicide. He was a very depressed, Person. He had a lot of issues in his life, um, you know, and I understood you know, more and more I get older I understand some of the stuff he went through uh, emotionally uh, But yeah, he died 1997 of suicide and he never knew who his father was when he died never knew uh, his grand my grandmother his mom uh, Was the only thing I heard about this my grandfather was he was an abusive person and she left him so my whole life I thought this, or uh, this, there was, my original grandfather was abusive. My grandma just took off and we never heard from him again. Never got a name. His name's not even on my father's birth certificate. It just says Greenberg, uh, which is, you know, the last name of whoever his grandfather is. So his mom married and my father was raised by a stepfather. Uh, so, Let's go back to after he died. Don't really talk to that side of the family. Don't really, you know, after he died, we just don't keep in contact that much. And uh, recently, as you've seen on this channel, I did a DNA test thing at 23andMe. My girlfriend did as well. And uh, we got to learn some of uh, our background, some of our DNA, where we hail from, from like Europe and Africa and stuff like that. The special thing and the unique thing about 23andMe though is that if you connect with somebody with your same DNA, AKA like a relative, it will tell you another relative that took, took in the test or taken the test will connect with you. And I've connected with a whole bunch of them. A lot of them are just like third, fourth, fifth cousins. You know, not even like, even worth contacting to tell you the truth. Like, you know, it'd be like eventually me and her are gonna be related, you know, stuff like that. But I did match with one that said first cousin. And in the first cousin, was this name I've never heard of, never last name, you know. So it dawned on me, that's probably someone related to my real grandfather. Uh, so she contacted me and, you know, tried to get the 401, like, hey, what, who's your family, where are you from, and all that stuff. Uh, and I was curious, the more and more we started talking, I was just, you know, trying to get the connection of where our lineage is together. Come to find out, it is from my birth grandfather. Now, She's a first cousin, that means her father would be, because of her age, her father is brothers with my, my grandfather. So we don't know who this person is, but after talking, she started sending me pictures and names, and boy, some of these pictures, they look just like my father. I was having flashbacks, I was having, you know, just going down memory, memory lane, because some of these people look exactly like my dad, it was freaky. Some look like me, freaky. Uh, <laughs> bunch of old white people that, <laughs> bunch of old white versions of me. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, then I call my aunt, my great aunt, which would be my, my grandmother's sister. She's still alive. My grandmother died a year after my father died. So he's no longer with us. And actually his, his, uh, stepfather died in 2012 too, but we'll talk a little bit more about him in a little bit. Uh, but so I contacted my aunt. I wanted to get a little bit more information of everything she knew, uh, but I didn't tell her that I took the DNA test and matched with people of his family. So in time talking, she told me that she felt my grandmother was robbed of her life. And I was like, uh, what do you mean? You know, I don't understand. What do you mean she was robbed of a life? She told me that um, my grandmother was raped by a man and just took off. Remember in this video, I, I started off saying, I heard he was abusive and she left. 
she gave me a different side of the story. She told me that he was, he raped her and left. Now, I can understand not telling a child that, maybe, so if that's the truth. Uh, but I'm 32 right now, and I've, this is the first I've heard of that. Uh, now, I have to say allegedly, because that is not proven. We don't know if that's true or not. Nobody was there. This happened 1959, because my father was born in 1960. So that means this happened before the moon landing. It happened before the civil rights movement. So, yeah. So... We don't know if that's true or not, you know. But that's now what it's got in my mind that, oh, so when I find out who my real grandfather is, I might have to hurt an old man. But then, of course, that's not what I'm going to do and that's not my mindset of what I should do. Um, but after thinking about that a little bit more, like, you know what, that's, my aunt, I don't feel is a liar, but it's also not my aunt's word, she's repeating what my grandmother said and I don't know if my grandmother made that up you know of maybe just embarrassed of being pregnant or if that actually happened but we'll never know so I can't I got I gotta say alleged when it comes to that um, so I'm still doing my digging and I think we've put it down to about two people that is possibly my biological grandfather um, one died in the year 2001 of a heart attack but he's the one I think is my grandfather. Looks a lot like my dad, uh, same mannerisms. Uh, but there's also a guy that's still alive that looks a lot like my dad too. He is 84 years old and I talked to him briefly on the phone. He's a little, you know, he's hard to understand. It's a complicated situation, I get it. So he's hard, it's hard for him to get, grasp what's going on, but I, I'm trying to ask him, look, we need to take a DNA test to see how much percentage we are related because we've already confirmed that we are related. If you're 10% DNA shares, that means you're an uncle. If it's a little bit more than that, that means you are a grandfather. So, we just figure that out. We're, we're in the process of trying to figure that out. And, uh, but if it happens to be the one that, that did die, which I have a gut feeling it is the one that died, I want to find where he lives or where he's buried and put my father's ashes where he is so this will this story can come full circle because like I said he, um, he committed suicide I'm starting to learn from my mother and a little bit from my aunt that the reason he did that was not because he didn't grow up with a father and not know who his father was because his grandmother my grandmother would refuse to tell him that and he never knew from anybody, he had a lot of issues in his life. Um, but a lot of it stemmed from that. Not having a father in your life, not knowing your father. His stepfather was abusive. Mentally, sexually abusive, you know, all that stuff. To him and his sister. Mostly to his sister. So, you know, he, he had a terrible upbringing. He didn't get along with his family. And then not on top of that, he always having this mystery of not knowing who his father is. And, and he died not knowing who his dad is. That's why I feel like it's very important for me to be in my son's life. You know, we, I had all my family is all over the place, but I don't have a special relationship with them. I don't, you know, not close with a cousin or an uncle or not. That's why I want my son to be like that. I want, I want to make sure he knows everybody in his life. So he's not trying to put these pieces together like I am. Because... As a kid, no one told me any of this. I'm finding this out. My father died in 1998, or 97. My grandma died in 98. You know? They, he, he died not knowing who his grandfather is. It's, if I didn't take this 23andMe test, I would never even, like, care. You ever just, like, met somebody, like, for example, I met her, and she's in my life. Before that, I was living a great life. I was living, it wasn't a great life, great life, but I was just living a life not knowing who she was, but I was living. Now that she's entered my life, I can't see a world without her. That's how I feel about this situation, kind of. I never cared about who my grandfather was, but now that all of this information's coming into my life, like my father was depressed not knowing who his dad was, and it, I feel like it's, it's my job to bring it full circle bring his ashes to him and you know since he died not knowing I'm glad I finally figured this mystery out so
So like I said, we have two candidates. I have a feeling about one of them, but I, we need to finish taking these DNA tests. Um, but I'll keep everybody uh, posted. Did I miss anything? Do you think I hit every button? Very complicated story. Very. Yeah, it, it's, it depresses me though, you know. My dad was a product of rape. Possibly, allegedly, maybe. If that's true, that means I'm secondhand rape. Now, I'm glad to know I wasn't. I'm glad I was conceived in love, from my mother tells me. <laughs> um, but the fact that he was born, allegedly, possibly from rape, and then had an abusive stepfather, and they just had a lot of emotional pro trauma in his life, and just, you know, he just, he just wasn't all there sometimes. Kind of feels like he didn't have a chance. The people around him felt him. That's why it's important so we, we take care of our kid. I can't fail my kid like that. I can't just leave him to fend for himself. I, I, I forgive my father for leaving me. But you know, it does, I do question that a lot. Like, man, where would my life be if he didn't leave me? Where, you know, but at least I had, had him for a little bit of time in my life. And he didn't even get that from his father. And I'm sad, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get some more information. I'm gonna keep this blog going because I, I, this is a very personal one. Yeah. Another aunt thing was interesting. Yeah. she found out? There. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so thanks for reminding me about that. So also, the lady I was talking to that I matched up with 23 and me, she told me that the guy that, that passed away that I think is my grandfather, he had another child that did, he didn't know of. And she's still alive, so this would be technically my dad's sister if this is my, my grandfather. And she, you know, I talked to her briefly, really nice lady, she had red hair as well like my dad. Um, but it was interesting. Whoever, if this guy is starting to sound like it is him, but if it's him, it sounds like he, if he wasn't a rapist, he sure did get around. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it sounds like he was, mar he was married for a while to a lady, but he's having multiple children from different women. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, listen, we don't have to be a reincarnation of our parents. We can live our own lives. And if you don't have a family that's keeping in touch with you, make your own. Screw it. I'm starting my own. Try out Start Monday. Boom. Help keep uh, the street this guy to my dad's YouTube channel. Love, peace, and chicken grease.